110 tires. Can you see that? All right. So our order quantity will vary depending on, of course, what is left. But there is one constant that we always use, which is nice. This is the constant 200, the M that we have been using, but without quite explaining much. But at least now you know the dynamics, how it works. Every uh, T days, we'll visit our inventory. Okay, And there is this part of L. Uh, both T and L are constant. T is called the review interval. L is the lead time. So we know that much. Might as well write down. So T is the review uh, interval okay, in days or weeks or uh, well, yeah, basically sometimes months. And L is the lead time, which is also a constant. And we call, because L and T, they are so important, we call L plus T. T plus L. The protection interval. Um, remember our discussion of continuous review with um, probabilistic demand, right? Where we say demand during lead time is very critical to be aware of the distribution because after we make an order the lead time starts and that's when we start to worry please 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 demand better not be too extremely large that's good for business but it will clear out our inventory which will leave us in a in a kind of a difficult state of maintaining customers trust in us right because we have nothing to sell and that's not a good signal to send out so uh we need to know very well and the very well part is reflected in our knowledge about the distribution. So likewise here, because we have longer interval of not knowing uh, what is the demand, it's no longer just lead time, but the whole uh, review period is kind of a dark uh, space for us where we have no idea what's the inventory level. So all the more, we need to ensure that both in the review interval as well as the lead time, we're being a bit conservative here, we add them together, uh, should allow us to have sort of a good knowledge about how the distribution would be. In other words, we need to know, we need to master the probabilistic behavior of demand during T plus L. So to give it a name, we need to know the demand during protection interval. Okay. Now, some of you might be looking at the diagram and correctly sense that, you know, assuming lead time is always smaller than the period, uh, review period, actually, maybe we should take the max, which is just T itself, right? Um, yes, but we are a little bit conservative here by, uh, we, we don't take max, which is hard to manipulate mathematically. So we just take the sum uh, and we call that the review, sorry, the protection interval, T plus L. So if you have watched the continuous review with dynamic demand lesson. We talked about demand during lead time. All right, this part, the T plus L part, demand during the protection interval part, is the same. Uh, we have the same concern and the same need of knowledge for that duration about the demand. Right, so we need to establish duration. Uh, well, demand behavior during the protection interval. So the way to determine M, okay, given that uh, T plus L, L plus T, is of concern to us, is going to be something like this. All right? So let me switch over to um, writing mode. So suppose daily demand, one day demand, follows normal distribution with a mean of uh, 20 tires and standard deviation of 8. Okay, suppose that is given. Assume given. All right. And we have T equals to um, 7 days. All right. And L, uh, L lead time equals to 3 days. Then our protection interval will be 10 days. So in other words, we need to know the demand distribution during the protection interval. Okay, so that is to be calculated from um, 
the daily distribution for the first day plus the daily distribution for the second day plus and so on until daily distribution for the ninth day daily distribution for the tenth day again this is not to be mistaken as 10 times uh, the daily distribution because that means that if a single day distribution is high then all 10 days are high and that doesn't sound right does it yeah so here it means that every day it is a normal distribution so every day is a normal except they are independent so the first day could be a high distribution uh, could be having high demand second day low demand ninth week we have average demand tenth week we have extremely high demand so they can all change on their own account doesn't they are not related to each other so if that's the case then we say that uh, this is normal plus normal plus normal ten times so we know that from statistics normal plus normal will give us normal distribution all right and the mean will be the sum of all the t plus l days so that will be t plus l times the daily demand mean all right and this is our standard deviation for daily demand and the variance will be again t plus l times the variance of the daily uh, demand okay so it's working out very much like how we derive the demand during the lead time given daily demand okay uh, and uh, wait a minute because we don't want to just know the distribution we actually want to calculate uh, m so to calculate m it is uh, the case that we need to know the inventory level the target inventory level such that the service level is to be met okay so what is service level service level is defined as the probability of having stocks to meet demand having things to sell okay so the way it goes is that m is going to be found by the inverse cdf of uh, normal distribution if demand during protection interval is normal but it will be the relevant inverse cdf if demand during protection interval is not normally distributed so we have the inverse cdf of service level that's it in general that is right and uh, what that means is uh, we can continue our example here so so um so d of t plus l basically means that it has a normal distribution of 10 times 20 and 10 times uh, 8 square okay so we write that as uh, 200 comma uh, square root of 10 times 8 together squared now since m is to be found from inverse norm of the service level so if example service level is set to 0. Point, um, let's say uh, 95 okay 95 percent service level so this means that m is going to be the inverse cdf using normal distribution of 0. 0.95 okay so from our calculator or from table lookup we can calculate what is m okay m is going to be using inverse norm from a suitable calculator right we enter 0 0.95 our mean is 200 and our standard deviation is 8 times square root of 10 okay so the calculator will give us 241.6119 and so we'll give that as our academic answer with 4dp precision and of course in real life you can round up you can round down a little bit um, 
at this quantity, it's not going to matter too much. Okay. Another way to find m, uh, especially when it is normal, all right, is going to be the average demand during protection interval, because this guy here is the average demand during protection interval, and this value here, eight times square root ten, is the standard deviation during protection interval, right? So we can say that this is the z value times the standard deviation during protection interval. So let's do that. Um, we have 200 plus the value of z times 8 times square root 10. Okay, the value of z again is based on service level. So to do that, we basically use same inverse norm or table lookup. And uh, the table lookup will already have calculated based on assumption of mean 0, 6, the SD of 1. But uh, we can also get from our calculator and get 1.6449. So it's 1.6449. And we should get back the same answer. Uh, 200 plus 1.6449 times 8 square root 10. Okay, so that again gives us the same answer, 241.6130, with a bit of uh, noise in the third, fourth decimal places, uh, not surprising. Okay, so that basically uh, shows how we can calculate the uh, how many to order part, because once we know M, the target inventory level, we will use that to less off the count that we get at every inventory visit. Uh, warehouse visit, right? And then we know what's the quantity to order. So when do we order? Every t uh, days. How many do we order? M minus the count. 